Hi folks, welcome to part three. Hopefully part three of three and not three of 27. <laughs> this is the last shot. We're just, we're just gonna make it work. We're okay. We're gonna have to speed through it here. Yeah, we're just, we're just gonna keep doing it for those again. If you're watching on the replay, I'll have links to part one and two <laughs> in the comments below, etc. In the blog post, I'll actually have them like each video back to back to make this easier fault. This is nuts. This is ridiculous, but stubborn, you know? Plus it was going, like, oh, the plan of this card was going good. So let's get back into the card. Let's hope, hope the things work. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's hope third time's the charm. <laughs> Wham. Oh my goodness. Okay. Maybe, maybe quit poking the bear amy and <laughs> trying to cause chaos and just you know just shut up and craft <laughs> oh my goodness if it's not one thing it's another i appreciate you guys jumping around with me though very much so it's so frustrating and yeah i guess we did we got too comfortable thinking that uh Thinking that we had everything under control and fixed, we we just learned that we very much didn't. So that's fun. Right back to basically square one with that. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? One thing I want to do is I'm going to change the camera from one to the other. See if it follows the, the camera. Yeah, well, you can definitely try that and see. We, we've got a few more things to test behind the scenes. Not now obviously to uh see if we can fix it yeah. to see if we can fix it, fix it with the least amount of money spent possible. oh gosh yeah because if i find out it's the cal digit i'm gonna be i'm gonna lose my mind that thing was a fortune i'm not even kidding anyway that's what i was saying before uh, i ended part two for those that you know, have been thinking about getting into, you know, they want to make video content, etc. The The level of equipment and stuff that I have is completely not necessary to start. You can do all of this basically from a smartphone. Yep. You know, do not invest any money, you know, until you actually know that you like doing making content or videos or whatever it is, you know, and then you have to start figuring out down the road. It's like, oh, you know, I would love to be able to do this that you need a bigger camera for or, a com you know, different thing. That's how, you know, I started with a little tiny pink point and shoot Canon camera. And of course it was pink. It was my very first digital camera. And this was almost 20 years ago. Not quite. And that's what I filmed my first videos on because back then we didn't have smartphones. And yeah, my first video editing software too, it was like some crappy little program that was free. It wasn't iMovie because I didn't have a Mac either. And it was some... And then it came with Windows? Possibly. It was stupid. I remember being so frustrated. Windows Movie Maker or something? It wasn't even Windows Movie Maker. I honestly don't remember the name of it, but it was crap because you couldn't like splice out. Like I had to film continuously. And you couldn't like actually edit. And then like that was my next little purchase was to get, um, I forget what I had got. And then, and then getting my first Mac was a very big deal, especially again, almost however many years ago. But yeah, start with what you got. Cause then really like kind of, a, which I don't like that saying like more money, more problems, but mo tech, more problems, <laughs> literally it never ends. But yeah, you start small, use what you got. And nowadays, smartphones can do everything. And I have gone live from my phone many times. It works fine. Um, so yeah, just do that. And I know there's people too that like film their videos like with their iPad and, and do it all that. Like whatever works for you, like 100%. You do not need to invest, you know, in anything crazy. So... Anyhow, I got my layers stacked, and then my outline, 
have this die set, which again is the just a note. I wasn't paying attention. I was too busy yapping. So I put too much glue on here. Um, the Just a Note die set by CZ Design. And I, I, I die cut the outline from vellum. And yes, thank you, Jessica. And it's true. Yeah. You know, because regardless of all my other rants, for those that were part of part one and part two, <laughs> uh, regardless of all those rants, I still also believe, not only with card making, but regardless of whether or not a person wants to specifically make content for card making, you could want to make it for whatever your interests are like, like, whatever, you know, it's free to everybody. Setting up a YouTube account is free. Use what you've got. And then just see where it goes. So yeah, my only other big piece of advice, because I've been asked this over the years, do not quit your day job. No. Ever. <laughs> like, especially if you get benefits, like health benefits, insurance, all those sorts of things. Don't quit your job to become a YouTuber. Like, dude. And if you're young for whatever reason, because you know, I don't, like, we're all adults here, but get a good education, get a good job. You can do content creation on the side, you know? And if you ever get to that point where you're actually able to choose, you know, between content creation and your actual job, then you make that decision, depending on what's best for you. But, yeah. Also, don't forget that this is all very fleeting and there's no guarantees. Because, you know, all your tech can just stop working. <laughs> Turn it live. Or, you know... We are at the mercy of the robots and the algorithms and all the crap. So there's there's that one. Um, craft room is it? My craft room's not clean. I have someone that keeps pestering me to do a tour. I'm not going to. Um, I've addressed this many times. Um, I will not do a craft room tour. I have many many reasons. It's a shared space. I have actual stalkers. Um, and the big one is it's it's not clean. Not. You guys only see a tiny little bit behind me, you know, that's it. It's not clean. Trust me. It's an absolute disaster. It's on my list to deal with. Do I have time to do it? No. There is a couch in here somewhere. Yeah. I used to have a little, Chris calls it my fainting couch. Yeah. I used to use it because my one corner, which some of you might remember when I had to set up my new website, I was filming a few lives over there on my Facebook page. But I've got, you know, a couple Ikea Calyx units and they're full of books and stuff. And I have this little, this little tiny like half couch that I used to curl up on so I could read and different things in here. And it's now a storage couch. There's so much stuff piled on it. And some of it, I have no idea. I don't even know where I'm going to put it because I've just, it's become a catch-all. It's like the, I would say it's like the treadmill, but actually our treadmill does get used. You know, so instead of the treadmill, we just pile it on my little couch or I pile it on there. It's all my stuff. I got to deal with it. I have like a stack of Tim Holtz stuff sitting on there. So I will get to it. Oh, I'll get to that. Give me a sec. I gotta deal with the wet glue first. So yeah, no plans for me. And I know they are fun. I love them. Thank you, Connie, for this super chat. I very much appreciate it. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I, I love craft room tours. It's fun. It's so fun to see how other people store their things and organize their things or whatever. You know, those are fun videos. I get it. I 100% get it. And I'm I'm sorry that I can't do one. Honestly, I just, where everything is right now, I have zero plans on doing it. Maybe someday, though. You never know. I have old ones um, on my channel from eons ago. And people can search them out if they want. But, yeah, I where all my things are right now um it just ain't gonna happen so i did cave though and i posted my first haul video for the first time in like i think years um those i'll start doing again because those are fun and that's just is so got those stacked um oh yeah craft rooms don't need to be clean but trust me mine is bad <laughs> Like, 
if someone who doesn't know me was to walk in here at this point now, they would just be like, oh, she's a hoarder. <laughs> That's what it looks like. It's bad. I have stuff like, and Chris, no, like we, I have paths through. It's bad. Like it is bad. I need to deal with it. I just have it. So I will, I will get to it. Hey, Simon. How's it going? Okay. So, yeah, like I just, I, I, I didn't used to be this bad, but I've just, I've been so busy and, and honest, and complete honesty when I do have a bit of time where it's like, I should be like, I look at how much I have to deal with. I leave the room. I curl up in bed and I play video games for half an hour. <laughs> and Chris knows. It's just like, nope, I'm done. I'm done. I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> so I go and play either some Zelda or some Stardew Valley. Okay. The splatter is now dry. Uh... Ah, good to know. See? Same thing. Because you guys only see from like basically here up. It's kind of the same idea. Again, Kathy's probably not in the chat anymore. If you are, hey, Kathy. But she talks about her lives, so I'm not giving anything away. But, like, you know, she doesn't wear a bra during her lives. And then, you know, she keeps camera hair up, turns off the butt cam when she gets up, whatever. It's kind of the same idea, you know? I'm wearing a bra on mine. But you guys don't see blue. So usually I'm in, like, pajama pants or sweatpants. And then there's a mess that you guys can't see. I keep everything else somewhat decent. But don't look too closely. We, we have a window of cleanliness. A relative cleanliness True. with a camera points. Yeah. yeah, you know, you just keep it within frame. Everything's somewhere, although right directly behind me, you guys can't really see it though, because again, my like my body's in the way. There's a mess behind me. I have so much stuff piled up. Uh, I was just like, whatever, I'll deal with it. I'll deal with it someday. You know, it just is what it is. And I now missed a whole bunch of the. <laughs> Uh, is there a trick for getting vellum to die cut? I have the impression for some reason taking three or four times. Your vellum should die cut, no problem. If you're finding for whatever reason that, especially something like this, now if it's intricate, like if I die cut the words or just a wafer die that, like especially on ones like this, like this, and I talked about this in, in part one of three. I think it was part one or part two. I don't even remember. Good lord. Intricate wafer dies that are die cutting, you know, more than just a basic outline, anything more than a basic outline, I call it intricate because you know, you're die cutting furfy bits. And if you find like one like this, you, you go to pull it out and it's like not disconnecting or like none of this is cut, et cetera, et cetera. The easiest way around that is just add a shim, you know? So even if you're using an empress, add, add a little uh, sheet of cardstock. I, in fact, I have one that I keep. I use this for other things for when I'm doing certain embossing folder things but like a shim of cardstock stick that in between doop 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 your way for die you're good to go um vellum can be a little bit of a finicky beast because it's just the way vellum is it is you know so anything more than basic outline sometimes can get a little hmm. so just add a piece of cardstock and, and it will even help too if you do like where's my way for dies i lost them they ran away they were probably done with my crap here they are they're just like, we're out. We're so done with your crop. Okay. So you got wafer die. And with my Empress, I, I use the cutting plate, metal shim, magnet, wafer die, cardstock, cutting plate. And if you find that your, you, let's say you put a layer of vellum and it's not cutting through this, even remember I said, I ran this through a couple times. Cause again, this is like super intricate, put your vellum and then put like another piece of cardstock. So then it's got to press through and it might, it probably won't cut through the cardstock layer, but that's irrelevant. You just want it to cut through the vellum. So that should, that should help regardless of what die cut machine you're using. If you find that something's not cutting through all the way and you die cut it, like run it through more than once and it's still not going through. Also, you can move it to different areas because again, just the die cut, like my, even though technically these plates don't warp a lot, I die cut so much that my plates, you can't even really see it. It's, the teensiest bit bowed um moving it a lot of times you'll get better sometimes like closer to the edge it just move it around you do that anyway because that helps getting more cuts into various areas of your die cutting plates shit hopefully that helps 
So yeah, just a shim of cardstock will. With vellum, add a shim. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. So, um, you can do either one. You can do the shim on top between the, you know, the die, vellum, cardstock, cutting plate, or you can put the, the shim underneath, like I showed, underneath between the cutting plate and the metal shim. It's fine. Experiment with your machine. The biggest thing to always remember, I got like sticky stuff in my nail, that's bugging me. Uh, the biggest thing to remember is whatever you're like trying to die cut, if you're, you know, feeding your plates through your machine, whether it's electric, manual, it doesn't matter. If your machine's not taking it because you've got too many shims or whatever, do not force it. You do not want to break your machine because that kind of sucks. So yeah, but you can experiment with different um, shims. Are you aging backwards? No, I'm wearing makeup. <laughs> I put on makeup today, so you know, I just I look better than I'm not as haggard. I have concealer uh, to cover the dark circles, so I'm not aging backwards. Just the the magic of makeup. Um, is vellum only honestly? I'm not even 100 percent certain. You want to Google that? What is vellum made out of? I love me vellum. Anyway, okay, we'll get back to the vellum discussion in a second. We got our card bases. Everything is dry. Mama fabulous splatter. So we're going to put that in my Misty. Ooh, I got sticky bits. They're made of cellulose fibers. That makes sense. Vellum is made of cellulose fibers. Yeah. Yes. So that's why it's different. Whereas cardstock, cardstock, paper fibers, like tree fibers, and then watercolor paper, a lot of it, especially the quality, higher quality, aka more expensive watercolor paper is made of cotton fibers you know the better the watercolor paper and more expensive because it's cotton cheaper watercolor papers are generally made from paper fibers your paper pulp that kind of stuff it just it varies okay so we're going to get into um hi mindy yeah <laughs> i have so many problems <laughs> literally <laughs> the title didn't give it away part three of three anyway uh, we I talked about this in one of the parts. I don't even remember anymore. This set's on pre-order because it's sold out because it's amazing because we all love Kathy Zilski and we needed sets like this. I love. And those of you that have followed me for a very long time, like back in the day when I used to make my, when I used to have stamp sets that I made, which people get asked me about that, not even on my radar right now. Um, that was my favorite thing, making sentiments. We always need lots and lots of sentiments and this set is awesome. So... What do I want to put? Um, I'm going to use this one for these cards. Because again, these are the ones that um, we're going to pick winners and send them to. So I'm going to use the sentiment that says, just a note to tell you that you're the coolest person ever. How did I get so lucky to know you? I think that's cute. So I'm going to put that in here. So... We're gonna just line that up. Boop. Okay. Line that up. And then where's my ink pad that I had pulled out to use for this? I already lost that. Good job, Amy. That's gonna be in the ether at this point. Oh no, I put it away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There we go. Remember when I was literally scared to get up? In yeah. some of those earlier lives, because we were worried that the camera was freezing because there was no movement. <laughs> Chris, I used to make Chris dance. Yeah. <laughs> before I'd start lives, if I had to run to the bathroom before we would start, because sometimes my camera would freeze. And so we assumed it was maybe because there was no movement. So Chris would like <laughs> dance. For the to, just to keep sure I forgot about that till just now. Anyway. No idea if it works, really, but sometimes you just never know. I'll, I'll take anything to help. Anyway, new color. Simon finally released navy shades. People were asking about them. I had to laugh. I don't can't remember if it was the last live, one of my recent lives, and people were going on about navy shades, and I was like, yeah, be, you know, it'd be so nice if we if Simon did that. They were sitting, they were behind me the entire time, you guys. Um they were delayed. These were supposed to come out. People were asking about, because the they're trios. 
you know, trio one, two, three, four, yada, 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 yada. And the last few, they skipped a trio, trio 25. And I had people asking me and I wasn't 100% certain and I couldn't have answered it anyway. But that was this trio. This was actually supposed to be released months ago. Um, but they had an issue and they were like perfecting the color they wanted to get. So they are now available. So yeah, it's um, a very nice, this is the darkest one of the three. So this is night. I need to swatch. I was going to do that live because I haven't swatched like the last three trios that came out. Still need to do that. I will get to it. There we go. It is nice and and dark and fabulous. So we finally have the the navy shades in the positively saturated inks. And the thing to remember too with these, and it also applies to the Concord and Ninth inks because they are the same type of ink pad. These are the foam ink pads, so they are mushy. Is and it takes a little bit. I'm used to it now. But it takes a bit is you just you're you got to be gentle you don't want to like reef your ink but you don't need to tap it either because these are not felt you know felt with linen ink pads these are softer and they are saturated so you just light little taps Boop. and there we go okay okay so yeah these are um Beautiful. And yes, Christy, I, I'm not sure when because I haven't been told anything, so I'm not giving anything away. I just assume we'll start seeing the cubes for the last however many colors um, in upcoming releases. So you never know because we got those couple of little cubes in the May card kit. So I my assumption is that we're going to see the cubes in Simon's next release, which I assume there's going to be one in May, probably. We'll see. I have no idea. I honestly have no idea. I don't know what I'm talking about. But yeah, hopefully cubes soon. Okay. So, yeah. Got our, our sentiment stamped. I can put this away. Oh, so now you tell me. Well, I've been telling people for a while now. Okay. So. Um... Yeah, I definitely want to add a butterfly to the inside. I'm going to trim off. For those, I, I did this. Chris even linked to these. So these were the world butterflies. So that's the butterfly. And then the body is from this die set, just the world dragonfly that I've shown in, in videos. And for these little guys, I'm just going to trim off like their tail. Like that. Yes. 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 And then I have glue goobers everywhere. Hawkeye. The other two inks in the night trio are sky and dusk. They're linked. I, I posted a link to the whole trio in with the supplies. So if you click on the visual supply list, they will come up. So we're going to put one of the butterflies right there. And then we'll do the same thing with card number two. Okay, just like so. And then, um, Erica, remind me at the end. I make no promises, though. If if we can make it to the end without my camera, I don't want to. I don't want to attempt to. Remind me at the end if if you know if, if it gets to that. Comes. Yeah, if the end ever comes. <laughs> Please. I welcome it at this point. Good lord. Okay. There we go. Just going to stick my magnet on him. And now we got to do that to this guy too. So I'm just going to... It's like... It's hard to show. But yeah, he's got little like bumpy bits. So I just at the end of the bumpy bits, I just trim that off. There we go. Can't tell me what to do. I know, right? Things like that request, I don't mind. It's it's other stuff when people are like trying to literally tell me what to do. And I'm just like, you're not my real dad. You can't tell me what to do. Oh, 
or in Chris's case, although he doesn't really tell me what to do, but if it comes across as that, he knows I'm gonna, I'm a strong independent woman. <laughs> I don't need no man. It's your space. I'll tell you what to do here. <laughs> oh, even around the house, you know. <laughs> he gets, and he does it too, even before. Yeah. <laughs> he knows my response. Anyway. <laughs> Is it? Oh, well, they'll restock it. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I didn't mean to. It is a beautiful wafer die. They'll yeah, restock it pretty quickly. Simon is pretty good at being able to restock their, their wafer dies and stuff fairly, fairly quickly. I've got glue on my fingernail and it's driving me batty because I keep feeling it. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, so there's the inside of my cards, because you guys know, you got to have something on the inside. And then, oh, well, even my dad will tell you I don't listen. Oh, I know. I only use that phrase, but li like to literally anyone on the planet, it's like, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> it immediately just gets my hackles up. I'm just like, no. My gut instinct with any of that, because I'm so stubborn, is to do the absolute op opposite. So, yes. And I'm also very aware of how immature that is. Anyway. Yeah, this is working. It's working. Let's get it. Let's get it adhered. I did not put cardstock. Usually in most of my videos, I take a die cut a lot of times and I will glue that to the back of the vellum. However, today, because I was just the way this is, I don't feel the need to do that. And also I'm not, we're not, we're not going to do it. We're just going to get her done. So when I don't have that cardstock on here, I just have to actually, I'm going to use my one. I do have two of these because I keep a separate one with the fine tip, which I don't use the fine tip as often as this one is clogged because it's been sitting for too long. <laughs> yeah. Wah, wah. There we go. Yep. So, because vellum, because adhesive shows through vellum, I am just going to trace where the words are so that we don't see the adhesive. And this is just generally easier when I have that cardstock die cut on the back. But this is only more difficult because I'm trying to talk and show and stay on camera at the same time. This isn't that difficult, but I'm like multitasking to the extreme at the moment and my brain is starting to short circuit. And then my hands are like, let's get shaky while you're doing this. Because you know, you haven't had a chaotic enough day. Eight. There we go. There we go. So we're gonna adhere this one rubber just like that. And it's so pretty. It's so pretty. And same thing. I'll just put the magnets on there just to hold that in place. And I will do this again with this one. Oh, wrong one. I want the one with the fine tip. Jotty. Okay. So I just trace along with my shaky little hands. Get you very, very quiet <laughs> when you're doing this because you're hunting rabbits. Which glue to total silence. It does, actually, because I'm like. My entire right side is shaking now because it's just being stupid. Good night. Uh, yeah. Great job, Amy. You're doing great. This is so good. So professional. It's hard. Okay. There we go. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Did that one. There we go. Uh, 
I love Oishiro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This glue doesn't, because it just doesn't dry sticky. I've talked about this before. I cannot stand, like, way back in the day, the glue of choice in card making was Tombow Mono Multi, which I actually still have a few bottles of that crap. Um, but it when it dries, it dries tacky. So if it oozed out anywhere and, like, if it got on your skin and, and it was sticky. <sighs> Can't handle it. It drove me insane. This stuff doesn't dry sticky, so if it gets on, I can just... It's gone. Except for I've got it on my fingernail, and it's annoying. Because I can feel it. Because my fingernails are smooth. So I've got, like, glue goobers still. I have so much... I don't know how I got that much glue on me. Whatever. Anyway. Back to what we were doing. Get that over there. Let's get these guys adhered into place. And choop. Adhere that one. And then with this guy, do I want to keep the body longer? Yeah, I want to keep the body longer, even though it's not, you know, it's a dragonfly body, not a butterfly body. Whatever. Don't care. It's cute. So is it gonna... It's so cute! And then we'll do that one. We'll get them going that way. And then for the little guys, we'll still keep trimming the bodies just a smidge. There we go. Okay. What happened to the multimedia mat? I only use multimedia mat on very rare occasions. It it's a good glue and that stuff is is pretty pretty strong. But it dries even faster than like the craft tacky glue and the reason I like the craft tacky glue is it's cheap. It's cheap. I like how it works. But yeah. There we go. So that guy. So now we just got to repeat on this one. Okay. And then kind of like so. And then I didn't know that about dragonflies. I love dragonflies a lot. Okay. I love butterflies too. Yeah, I want to go back to the Calgary butterfly place in the zoo. Yeah, the Calgary one. They have that one in the city though too. Do they? Remember? They have a butterfly house at the forestry farm in the city. Oh. Yeah, we've been there. Haven't we been there? I've been there. I can't remember, I can't remember if you or if we brought you at the one time I brought they've taken the kids a couple of times. It's fun. I know, right? Especially those big ones that are brown on the outside and the blue. bright blue on the inside. Yeah. Love them. But yeah, I love butterfly houses. It's so fun. And again, if we ever get the chance to actually go to Vancouver Island, they have a gorgeous one. Really? A big but and you go in there and there's just tons of them it's 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 like the calgary one but even a little bit bigger i think it's near the bouchard gardens and that's another oh if anyone gets a chance to go to vancouver island highly recommend because one it's absolutely freaking beautiful but also the bouchard gardens it is unbelievable it used to be a quarry and the woman who owned it way 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 back I, this is like over 100 years ago i think now she had a like pulley system so that she could hang planks off the side of the quarry and she planted. It is phenomenal. Absolutely beautiful. Like jaw-droppingly beautiful. There's like rose gardens and all the kind of just beautiful landscaping. It's insane. Anyway. Okay. Yes. Yeah, all my favorite things. Flowers and butterflies and dragonflies. Little mushrooms. You know, little, little planty things. Don't, don't jinx it. Don't jinx it. I'm almost done. We're, we're getting there. Things are working. Okay. But my last little bit of bling, um, 
these dusk embellishments. That's why I went with blues today. I wanted to add some of these because they're pretty. So, okay. We're going to um, add a few little extra bits of bling. While I'm doing this, the unpaid intern. Is it my turn? It's your turn. Yes. <laughs> Were you getting bored? No. <laughs> we'll pick two winners because I made two cards this time. So he will pick two winners. And I'll mail the cards out. Uh, just a reminder, last week's winner, I haven't mailed it out yet. I'll be doing that this week. Because, yeah. Usually it helps if I've got like more than one thing to mail out at a time. That gives me more incentive to actually get things done because I'm ridiculous. So yeah, last week's winner will go out with these ones. Most likely at some point this week. So we're going to put a little bit of bling. Go in there. And there. Doop. Yeah, that works. That works. Okay. Okay. Truth. Chris, it's your time to shine. I'm shining. I really am. <laughs> uh, there we go. Chuck one over there. Chuck one over there. There we go. And then, to impress my determination, it is pure stubbornness. Like, just like nobody can tell me what to do, I'm not going to let the tech decide things for me. Don't let the robots win. Yeah, we won't let the robots win, man. So yeah, there ain't going to be no Skynet on my watch. Or I'll try not to anyway. Okay. We did it. Oh my god. Oh, it only took three three attempts with the live stream. And then let me do a quick little bit of cleaning up just to save myself the aggravation and then I'll I'll show the outside and inside of the cards. Just give me okay. Got okay. Somewhat, oh, you've, got, some you've got some winners. Can you give me a sec, though. Okay. okay. So, so that's Susan White from Halifax and a Marilyn Fisher from New York. All right, Susan White from Halifax and Marilyn Fisher in New York. I will mail these cards out to you, ladies. Here's the. Oh, I, I know what I need to do. Yeah. My phone is sweaty. Whatever. There we go. This is why we love the shimmer powders. It's because of that. See if I can show it even closer. It's sparkly and shimmery and amazing. That why we love it okay okay so those are the cards i'm gonna switch back to the lighting is like totally off on this too i don't know what to do though okay we're gonna do that i can stick that there for now there we go we did it we did it, we did it. yeah <laughs> Dork. Oh my goodness. Anyway, those for those that hopped around onto three different lives today. Thank you. I very much appreciate it. Um swiping these things on cardstock as promised. Okay, give me one second. Let me grab them. Okay. Let me grab a scrap of cardstock here. Do -ba -do, do -ba -do. That'll work. Yeah, this one will work. Okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, Chris is gone. <laughs> he's he's left already. Okay, let's 
Let me X that out for a second. Let's switch back down to what I was doing. Okay, yeah, Chris is, he's gone. He, he did his time. He helped. He did his thing. He's, he's out of here. <laughs> uh, okay, so the three new colors, which are linked in the supplies. These are the three new positively saturated colors. So we've got sky, dusk, and night. And... There's the sky color, just a very pretty um, blue. I guess I'm doing these kind of backwards, but whatever. The dusk is our medium color. And uh, this FYI, like, I, I don't know why. My, the, the tone of what you guys are seeing on your screen, one, it's always different anyway. But I don't know why my camera all of a sudden, I can tell, is very yellow. So take this all with a grain of salt because I'm not sure why like, again this camera's just being up mm. Ooh, that one's intense anyway so that's that's night it's very dark very pretty very very pretty colors so love them now I gotta wipe this out so they are beautiful and I do need to do my swatches of these along with the yellows that had come out and those oranges that had come out in the last couple months or whatever. But I am not sure when I'm going to get to that because, you know, life. Life. Um, they're actually very similar to the lid. This one isn't as much. But in real life, again, you guys, this is... But uh, and when it comes to inks, no matter what, no matter what... And it's the same with distressing. It doesn't matter the brand. This is never going to be the same as what is actually, you know, it on cardstock. Because this is a label printed onto clear plastic. So it's not the ink that's making it. They match it, you know, people match things as closely as possible. But it's never going to be the same. This is why I recommend swatching, you know. Um, because the packaging, it's just, it's not the same substrate plastic plastic is not paper plastic is not like they're not using a dye-based ink you can't use a dye-based ink on a plastic label so they they you know try to match it as closely as you possibly can but it's still a crapshoot so still close enough but this is why i like having swatches because and it also depends on your cardstock you know um, regardless of what product you're swatching, whether it's your inks, watercolors, whatever, swatch it on the actual cardstock you plan on using it on. Do not use cheap cardstock, because that's always like some, like it's just almost like a knee jerk sort of reaction is to like use the cheap stuff because it's just swatches. Yeah, but a lot of times it, it could look very different. So your results aren't going to be the same. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, they're very blue, but like I said, this, what you're seeing on your screen can be totally different. This camera, for whatever reason, is very yellowed out right now. I don't know why. That is really weird. Isn't it? It's very yellow. It, it it changes sometimes just depending on things I have on screen, but just I noticed it's and it's not switching back, although my viewfinder is very white. Again, you I don't know, she is whatever. So is what it is. But yeah, no, they're very blue. Not purple toned at all. Not Yeah. That that this is more representational. Because this camera's got its white balance is a lot better. I don't know. My white balance on the other one is fine, but it's just being stupid. Yeah, that, that, those are the colors. They're very pretty. They're very pretty. So you're back. Yeah. You just, you were like done and you ran like you always do. Yeah, I was. <laughs> Everyone was, exp they wanted to dance. <laughs> they wanted me to dance. <laughs> I had to go give the kids a snack. Oh, so. yeah, it's all good. It's all good. It's fine. Anywho. Anywho. So, yeah, I would not, these are definitely not purple undertones. I wouldn't even say gray undertones, but they would lean toward, more towards gray than, than purple. That one on the right seems to have a bit of gray in it. Possibly. But yeah, they're, they're more cooler toned, definitely. Um, so yeah, very, very nice, very nice colors. So anyway, they're, they've been very highly requested, of course. And yeah, Simon was planning on releasing these very, very, like lots of months ago. I think it was, it was the, the darkest shade that threw them for a loop. And then they like tweaked it to get it 
to the color they want because formulating ink colors and all that kind of stuff is its own beast. So yeah, they're very beautiful. Love them. I have links to them um, along with pretty much everything else other than there was those two items I used in part one. So it's kind of irrelevant at this point, but the hard board and the purple tape, like I always do. I will take photos of all the things. I'll do up my blog post. I'll put parts one to three in said blog post because tech issues, man. I don't even know. Will Chris and I will be doing some um, testing of a few things again when when we have time because he works full time too. Like we both work 40, 50 plus hours a week. I work 50, 60 plus hours a week. It never ends. It never ends. It's fun. Anyway. Um, I appreciate you guys. Stay tuned. My Sundays obviously are the schedule. Sundays, 2 p.m. Central for lives. And then the occasional random unscheduled one thrown in. Um, we shall see what happens. Ooh, are we going to have pork chops for this episode? We're going to have pork chops for supper. I'm, I, I endorse that message. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. All the support, hopping around the chaos with me as, oh, I, I'm so annoyed. I'm so annoyed. Now I'm annoyed with the white balance on that camera, which oh, I hate dealing with that kind of stuff. Camera settings, just not my forte. I made so things. many new things. Well, we'll it is, it that is the story of my life, honestly. And it's true. It's like whack-a-mole. We figure out one thing and we're like, yeah, we did this. We're so smart and awesome. And then we break something. <laughs> yes. Or just, we. it's not even like that we break it. It breaks itself. I'm not sure. We'd like to break it. Oh, sometimes I would love to smash everything to smithereens. But. But, you know, this is my job. I gotta do what I gotta do. <laughs> uh, it's it's nuts. But, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you guys tuned in. Yeah, see on the software. Look how yellow it is. That's gotta be a camera thing. Technically... But it's not, because see, the white balance is fine. It's the software. It's Why is the software being stupid? I don't know. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Back in the day when they used to split out like the three colors into three different cables before HDMI and people made video, it was easy to troubleshoot stuff like this because if you were getting one of the colors wrong. That makes sense. But with Oh, HDMI, thank you, Erica. Thank you. I very appreciate it. Um, yeah, usually I don't worry too much about white balance when filming. Because usually it's not an issue. This, I don't know why all of a sudden. Again, this camera's just been giving us issues today. Whatevs. Um, it'll happen sometimes when I'm filming. Because when I'm editing, you'll see it. But it'll hop in and out. But it usually if you put too much white on the screen, the camera's like, wah! You know? And the white balance will go weird and it'll go yellow. But then it'll come back and it's fine. So... Yeah, because I've got to set. I, it's already set on here. It's the software that's being that's been breaking stupid. bad. And whenever they filmed in Mexico, they added a yellow tint to the camera. I hate that Hollywood does that. I know it. It's just Mexico is just yellow, and New TV York now. is blue. Yes. Yeah, they use a blue filter when they film in New York because it's like cold and unfeeling, and the dangerous wasteland is New York. And then like South America is yellow. But it's not like that's anno it that actually annoys me that that's become such a thing. It's like so you know you're in a foreign location because it's got a yellow tint. Yeah, yeah, third world, you know, because of yellow tint. Oh. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> no, this camera's fine. Yeah. Different cameras. This camera, the white balance is totally fine. Don't have an issue with that. But oh, the settings I had to jump through. That's also like props to Kathy Zilski because, yeah, I got that camera because of her and she sent me the video. She's like, this is the video you follow to like, because there were so many settings that I had to tweak, like following the video. So, yeah, no, this camera's fine. This one's normally fine, but the face down one or the desktop camera basically is just being. It's not really the camera, though. It's the software. He's not behaving. Yeah, he's not behaving. Really annoying, especially when it's very expensive equipment. So. Um. Oh, my sewing machine. I use it for paper. So yeah, it's just a genome. Genomi. That's actually how I guess they pronounce it. Genomi. I always pronounce it genome, but apparently it's genomi. It's a little new home 
sewing machine. It's it's a cheapo sewing machine because if you're going to sew on paper, yeah, you want to use either a cheaper machine. If you don't have one, just get a cheap one. Those that actually sew, they know because they just cringe at the thought of sewing on paper. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. The only issues you have to worry about with sewing on paper is the, the fibers, you know, the, the paper dust can build up in the machine. So you just got to be care like aware of that. And then obviously it will dull your needles. I don't do anything special because again, this is just for paper. I ain't sewing on fabric. That's not my forte. You know, in a perfect world, if I had 10 times more space, I need a warehouse. I would love to like quilt and sew things and do all. I don't have space for that or time. So yeah, my machine's just for sewing on paper. So yeah. Um, <laughs> my rock candy glitter. I know, right? Those were limited edition. You can't get them anymore. Sorry. You can get rock candy glitter. You just can't get those those big ridiculous. Why I bought that much? I don't even. I have ten lifetimes. I have plans. There's some ideas because again, you watch Tim Holtz do one thing, and it's like I order five hundred dollars worth of glitter and and skeletons or whatever random crap <laughs> literally i was like i want to do rainbow colored little skeletons and make a garland and cover them with glitter so i ordered like extra glitter and did i do it no i will someday probably 10 years from now um but yeah you can still get rock candy glitter you just can't get the great big huge containers <laughs> uh so yeah anywho um I think everything is good. I didn't miss anything. I'm just like checking the chat, you guys. Yeah, everything is good. We're good. Um, it's like using fabric scissors for paper. I know it gets it, I, the meme pops up every once in a while on my feed. It's like I used my mom's fabric scissors for paper and now the police are here. <laughs> I honestly, and this was many, many, many years ago, because my mom used to sew avidly. Like, when I was a little, little, she used to sew, like, all her clothes and everything like that. And I used to steal her fabric scissors for all my little crafts, you know, cutting out my construction paper and stuff, you know, and she'd rightfully get mad at me. And, yeah, that was my, like, apology was when I finally, when I got my own job and had my own money, I bought her. And this was gosh 25 years ago like many years ago i bought her a very expensive pair of like fabric shears like stainless steel like really nice fabric scissors because <laughs> i felt guilty and i gave them to her for christmas her reaction wasn't as like as i was hoping for but i assume she actually still has those scissors because they were amazing and because i never used her scissors again because yes cutting on paper will ruin <laughs> your scissors <laughs> So anything you use for fabric, don't use for paper. We all know this. It's all good. So yeah. Um I color coded mine paintings. I actually way back in the day, like way back when I used to use ribbon a lot on my cards. Um some of you guys that have followed me for eons remember I used to have like big uh hurricane jars. This again, this was like 20 years ago. And I had a huge ribbon collection, like massive, all in rainbow order, of course, you know, because I put ribbon on all my cards, everything. When I got divorced and had to seriously downsize, I got rid of almost all my ribbon. I'm not that sad about it. There's some of it that I'm like, why did I get rid of it? It was so beautiful. Anyway, I used to keep a pair of scissors just for ribbon. And I tied a little piece of like green ribbon. It was it was a little pair of cutter bees just like this. And I tied ribbon to it because it kept, you know. They were used just for ribbon cutting because yes, cutting with paper. Although the my cutter bees have stayed sharp. I've had these pairs for years. Like I'm sure both of these pairs might be 10 years old or more. But there is, you can tell. You might think your scissors are sharp. Cut a piece of fabric with it. You'll know immediately if they're actually sharp or not. So yeah, I kept them designated with a little piece of ribbon so that I would never, anytime I grabbed them, I knew it's like, oh, those are my ribbon scissors. You know, I still have some ribbon. It, it makes an appearance every once in a while. Usually more like Baker's twine. I got off that kick again, didn't I? It'll probably come back. So, anywho, 
I appreciate you guys so much. It's fun chatting with you guys after this. I'm just glad that part three finally worked. <laughs> also, stay tuned. Because I was saying in... I don't remember who's this part or whatever parts. I wish I could splice them together on YouTube. That's a whole separate thing. Anyway, um, I will have another video coming using these butterfly. These whirl butterfly wafer dice. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to get it up tonight. It's just going to depend. I'm feeling like... I love doing the lives. They're just very draining. So when it's all done and I shut everything off, I'm just like, huh. and it's hard. And the most I can do is like, I take my photos, I do up my blog post, I get the work done. Um, but yeah, I'll have another video coming using them because I just, I love them. they're so fun. Um, yeah, it's color is pink. Um, it's been there. Yeah, you had quilts. Yeah, yeah. People that really like that sew, you know, if you were using fabric, cutting fabric, quilting, that sort of a thing. Yeah, you know, it's like, do not mess with the fabric shears at all. Those do not touch paper in any way, shape, or form. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my kids knew not to use anything in mama's sewing room. Yeah, when ours was just weird. I just, and that's what I used to always do. I still kind of shake my head at that because I was like, man, if my kids were doing some of the stuff I used to do, I was always like crafting. At least I wasn't getting into like serious trouble, but it was like I'd be up in the middle of the night as like a younger child, hot glue gunning things, using the fabric scissors, cutting things up. We had a button bag. Man, I couldn't even imagine like now, like moving into a house. We moved into this house and under the stairs was just like it was just this hideous you know the old wood paneling you know of like the 80s and under the stairs was a garbage bag thankfully it didn't have body parts in it or anything it was full of buttons like a black garbage huge full of like buttons and like little crafty kid oh i had fun with that button <laughs> i would just like pull it out and just like lay them all out because some were still attached to packaging all those things you know and i had my own little bits of fabric i made my own barbie clothes um with hot glue and fabric same with barbie furniture i would use like <laughs> uh that was also what i was using the fabric shoes on i was using them on cardboard i'm surprised i'm still alive because <laughs> i would cut up cardboard and hot glue it and like make my own barbie furniture <laughs> oh the fun times fun times fruit salad time yeah no no honestly the, the funny thing is i don't drink very much at all anymore um occasionally um but wine is something i don't have very often only because it it affects me funny not horribly and those that have asked about like create and stuff that's all ricky's fault i have barely touched wine since create last year um sorry i need to have a little mm. so yeah i stay away from the fruit salad aka the wine because yeah fly internationally with a massive hangover after having a great night at create it was like me and ricky aka bromero cards um joseph sabbath you know how trevor susan opal um jennifer mcguire was there gina k kathy rakusin oh i had a nice chat with kathy love her um yeah there was a whole bunch of us and we just had a great night oh fun times so and for those that keep asking yes i will be at create which is in two and a half weeks for those that aren't aware it is completely sold out it sold out ridiculously fast like i've never seen anything like it so um yeah i can't believe it's in like two and a half weeks that's nuts i'm not ready i'm not ready i'm not prepared Wah. anyway Mm. my mom and grandma both had round tins full of buttons well and it was just a thing because you needed them too back in the day you know because you'd need extra buttons to repair things and just you just needed buttons um yeah so oh yes shannon pelche i think that's how you pronounce her last name i'm not a hybrid spot she's oh i love her she's she's heading up um shannon's heading up hero arts now Amazing. I worked with her. I like volunteered myself at the waffle flower booth last year 
and Orca Shannon. She is just, she is a force. Like, so creative and so good at, like, in-person instruction. <laughs> that is not my forte. I can do these videos because I'm just sitting here talking to a camera. Like, you guys are all pretend. You're my pretend friends. Um, because that's what we used to call you guys. I forgot about that. My, pr my pretend friends. Um, so yeah. I love that. My mom admitted she left decoy scissors on her sewing table and hid the good ones from the kids in a drawer. Truth. Truth. Um, I had a two day work thing. Day two hungover was rough. Oh yeah. I just, we had a great time. My just, my glass magically kept refilling itself. AKA it was Ricky. He was like, look at that. It's like magic. It's just got more. And I, and I just, I was having fun. It was all good. I just, the travel home the next day was horrific. I learned my lesson as an adult, even though I knew better. I learned hard. <laughs> and poor Mari and, um, Oh, damn, my brain stopped. Cheryl Espy. She was with us. And she was traveling with us because Cheryl actually lives um, in Alberta. So she was taking sort of somewhat of the same flights. Or at least the one main flight. We had to separate. Yeah, on the way back. Um, poor Cheryl had to sit next to me and I was just dying. <laughs> it was bad. Oh, <laughs> uh, Yeah. Yeah, you're not cool unless you had a tin full of buttons. Yes, and that, like, and it's become a meme now. But it's so true, the, the tins that used to hold cookies, you know? But they never did. You always hoped they would hold cookies, but you knew if you opened it at your grandma's house, it was just full of, like, sewing supplies. <laughs> I still bring that up because Costco's been c carrying those. Usually more at Christmas time. They, those at the blue tins, you know, of, of cookies. And... I was joking with Chris the one day we were getting groceries and I was like, do you think there's actually cookies in there or is it sewing supplies? And he's like, we'll never know. We'll never know. So yeah, my grandma would open the button tin up and I would spend, yes, hundred percent. My other grandma had, they, she had a bucket, like an, you know, like a five gallon bucket just full of Lego. It was the first thing we would do as little kids, like zoom straight in. It's like, Hey grandma, like, don't even like, we just go straight to the bucket and then you just tip it over. And then we would just for hours, you know, so fun. So yes, Robbie, we'll see when you come back, if you've learned. Oh, I learned. I learned. I did it. I'm not even joking. Like it was hell. I'll never do that again. Like still have, I, I have so many plans to have fun with all my peeps at create. We'll have loads of fun, but I learned my lesson and uh, hangovers are not fun because the older I get, the worse they get. And it's just not worth it. It's so not worth it. <laughs> Danish cookies. Yes. Those old tins. I miss those. Uh, yeah. Just like the butter tub. Was it butter or leftovers? Yeah. Margarine tubs, butter tubs, all of that. hundred percent. That's what my grandma used always, even though she had Tupperware. She always put leftovers in, yeah. I remember, like, opening up the the margarine container and it'd be, like, stew or whatever, you know? Always. So funny. Uh, yeah, the more days it takes to recover as you get older. Oh, yeah. It took me... It took me a bit to recover. It wasn't... It wasn't pretty. And, yeah, I just... Yeah, I've had some health issues and stuff. Um, even leading up to create last year and I've been like dealing with it. And one of the things was I needed to cut back on alcohol. So I have the occasional, um, the occasional drink, just not as much as I used to. And I'm fine with it. Like yesterday I had, we went out for dinner for the first time in forever and I had a paralyzer, which it was good. It just, it just reminded me of small towns and bad decisions. <laughs> I was just, I was like, you know, this is good. Just this one. I don't need any more. And I'm now good for another 20 years. Don't need to touch the stuff. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. Or you thought it was something good and it was solidified grease. I know, right? Like bacon fat. Nothing worse than thinking there was going to be a treat and you open it up and it's just like a tub of like bacon fat. Uh, which now though, as an adult, it's like, that's like liquid gold, you know, for bacon. 
bacon baking cooking cooking i guess really so anywho i enjoyed chatting with you guys this was fun i'm gonna get my stuff cleaned up photos blog posts etc 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 i will mail out these cards to the winners and last week's winner because again i didn't i didn't mail that out i'll get those mailed out this week i have other videos coming as always so just stay tuned um tuesdays um tuesdays we go or sundays sundays i don't know what sundays we go live 2 p.m i think i was what 2 p.m tuesdays mm. sundays 2 p.m central and then we'll see i have so many ideas and so many plans but then my software decides to just you know mm, annoy me so we'll just see but like always i very much appreciate you guys very much and and just putting up with the chaos and all the all my ridiculousness and my rants and you know the fun stuff it, it, okay like i always say welcome to the chaos so i will chat with you guys later